Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for, for joining us on this uh, lovely afternoon. It's actually nicer in here than it is out there, so we're in a good spot. Um, I, I, Six Point Strategies is really, uh, and NRT are really excited to welcome you to this event. Um, it's a very special opportunity, a very rare opportunity we have to, to hear from uh, two very, very distinguished speakers. Um, so I want, it's really my, my pleasure to introduce you to uh, to our two speakers, Reed Wilson will be uh, introducing our um, our second one. But Reed Wilson is the national correspondent for the Hill newspaper, Washington's most widely read political publication. He's an expert in spotting political trends as they develop, and long before the ballots are counted. Known for staying ahead of the news through his access to top newsmakers, Wilson is a trusted staple of the political scene. Uh, Wilson covered politics for the Washington Post, and he's the founder and editor-in-chief of the, he's the former editor-in-chief of the National Journal is the hotline. His work has appeared in outlets like the New York Times, Real Clear Politics, Atlantic Monthly, New Republic, and his expertise is frequently also sought after by MSNBC, CNN, and C-SPAN. And before, before I, uh, before he introduces the, the panel, I just want to say that, um, it's really important that we have the freedom of the press. It's really, and we want to thank the National Press Institute for, uh, and for having us and for hosting this lovely event. So without further ado, we'd like to uh, introduce our two speakers, Reed Wilson and Shazwar Akadi. Thank right. you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me introduce the gentleman to my right. Shazwar Kadir is the founder and uh, director of Nalia Group, which owns the only independent television station in Iraqi Kurdistan. Broadcasting daily in Kurdish, Arabic, and English, NRT is the premier source for investigative journalism in the Middle East. Uh, three days after its founding in 2011, uh, the NRT was attacked and burned to the ground by armed gunmen. Uh, Shazwar himself has been attacked. Uh, he was wounded in a drive-by shooting and sustained injuries to his thigh uh, in 2013. And uh, you've got a pretty incredible story to tell. So please, start us off. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, it's nice to meet you today here in DC and in the National Press Club. In 2010, me and some friends of mine, we thought about the media project to establish a first Kurdish uh, television, uh, independent TV station. On that time, actually, we, we knew that it's not going to be easy. But let me be honest, we didn't know that it will be too hard, like we faced it in the last few years. However, in 2011, when there was a, like a Arabic Spring, and exactly on February 17, 2011, there was protesting in Kurdistan, especially in Suleimani ST, which is located in Kurdistan region, north of Iraq. Uh, at that day, the, my friends in NRT TV, they had two choices. One, are they opening the TV station and covering the protesting? Because at that day, there was people killed, kids like uh, 14 years killed, so, and the other choice was, or they will ignore the protesting and stay like the other old TV channels and say nothing. So they had a decision to start broadcasting for first time, 9 p.m. February 17th. And they started with covering of the protesting directly, showing the people, showing the gunmen how they killed the protester and how the people was killed. After three days of first NRT's broadcasting, and after three days of three teams, and only after 15 hours of broadcasting, because the first day we broadcast only three hours, the second and third day, six hours per day. So only after 15 hours of broadcasting, in the early morning of February 20th, about 50 armed people, gunmen, attacked NRT, and they burned the TV channel into the ground. It wasn't uh, not it wasn't easy for us. It was like a very very difficult situation. 
uh, but this is, didn't stop us. In 60 days, instead of six months, because usually the rebuilding of the channels need like a six month, only in two months, we start broadcasting again. And we directly we started rebuilding and prepared the channels. In that period of time, there was also treating of me in person and the other colleagues in NRT. They say, the first time we burned down the TV channel, this time if you open it again, we will burn the TV channels and you, sir, and yourself. But actually, also, that didn't stop us. We, starting, we started broadcasting again on April 2011, uh, sorry, on April 22nd, 2011. However, we, as, we, as we started working, and just two years later, in 2013, November 2013, I had been shot. I had assassination attempt, and they shoot me. Also because of what we are doing in Kurdistan and what we are funding and what we are supporting. However, those all three things and pressure on us and my friends didn't stop us. It makes us like believe in our cause more and it make, made us fighting for it. And now NRT Corporation, which is called Nalia Media Corporation, instead of having one TV channel, we have now three TV channels. Instead of broadcasting only in Kurdish language, now we are broadcasting in two languages. One TV channel is for Kurdistan news and the other news channel for all Iraq, which broadcast broadcasting in Arabic language. And we have a plan to expand the media uh, experience much and much. And in the next year, we have a plan to open the fourth and fifth TV channels, which also uh, broadcasting by Arabic language. Today, when I'm talking to you, the threatening and the ways of stopping NRT didn't stop. It's gone, continuous, day after day. Now, when I'm talking to you, one brave journalist from NRT, he's in jail. And according to law, the journalist should not be put into the, into the jail. But unfortunately, he is in jail while I'm talking to you. And we don't know why. Actually, we know why, but we don't know how it happened. But what I'm here today, just to tell you my stories, to tell you our stories, to tell you stories about the media in Kurdistan, and also the political situation in Kurdistan. Uh, that's uh, maybe all I have for now, and uh, I don't know if yeah, you well, have let's, a... Let's start. Tell me more about the attacks on NRT and on you. Who, who was behind this? I think the people who, who are against the free media is behind this. I think the people who they don't want the media to be exist, except those media that funded by themselves, they behind this. I think the ruling elite in Kurdistan, they behind it. I think those political parties and people in power, they, that they want to capture the state, to control everything, they behind the burning NRT and shooting me in person. I think the people that they don't want the country to be developed, the country to be prosper, they are behind those things because they, they easily, they don't want people to talk. They don't want people to have their opinion. They don't want to people to say anything about their life, about the government, about the corruptions. So those people, uh, I think, behind the burning of NRT and until today when I'm talking to you, nobody arrested in Kurdistan. We know who are they, we know the names, we know their residents, we know everything about them, and it is in front of the judge, which they ordered to capture them, but still no one arrested them. 
So there, there have been no arrests. What, what has been the rest of the government response to the attacks? Uh, let me be honest with you, and I don't want I have to, to see it. it. I respect my people. I respect my government. I'm, I'm part of Kurdistan. I love my country. But actually, what we have in Kurdistan is not a government. We don't have like a government. From, from outside, from far, it looks like a government. But when you came to Kurdistan, you see that there is a peoples, there is a families, clans, tribes running this country, managing this country. There is a group, armed group, they control specific area. This group, they don't have influence on the other groups, on the other group's area. It's not like a united government, which that's why we have an NRT. That's why we need the media. That's why we all have to work together because we love our country. We are not against anyone. Actually, we are not even against the government. Just we want them to, to know what is wrong and what is right. We want to show them if they do a mistake, if there is something wrong. We want to make our country better, developer, prosper country. But unfortunately, uh, we don't have this. And as I told you, we don't have a real government. We don't have institutions, actually. It's like all under uh, one political parties or under one man's control. It's not like a united government that can, can do investigation or can arrest them because, as I told you, the people who they burn down T NRT, those people that they have a power in Kurdistan. Mm -hmm. So if there's no government, there are no governing institutions, what is the political status of Kurdistan today? Unfortunately, today is something, unfortunately, is disappointed. Today, as I told you, we don't have institution. For example, we have a parliament of Kurdistan which is paralyzed. There is no parliament, there is no meeting. Even the speaker of parliament cannot enter the city that there is a parliament existing. Just the one policeman in the checkpoint stopped the speaker of parliament and say, you cannot enter the city, it's easily. There is no separation between authorities. There is no separation between judiciary, executive, and legislative authority. We, as I told you, there is a groups of people, groups of army people who they have a army, who they have a gun, weapon, they are controlling specific parts of Kurdistan. One group controls specific area and the other, the other area. They even don't have the control of the other areas. So, as I told you, it's just like a, under the government's umbrella. But if you see it in the closer, you will find that it's not the government. So that's the situation of institutions of Kurdistan region. And is there a free media today in Kurdistan? We have NRT, we have some other newspapers, we have the people that believe in, in the free media, but as I mentioned before, we have challenges. There is the people, simply they don't like the free media. They don't like free media to be exist. They put pressure on us too much. They do anything just to stop free media, just to limit it, just to put a boundary around it, just to like uh, stopping its financial source. So anyway, just to put everything under their control. I, as I told you, it is the mentality of capturing of the power, including the media. Mm -hmm. And you said, uh, you told me earlier, there are, there are other media outlets that are controlled by a party, by, by various political figures. Yes. Tell me, how does, that, how does that challenge NRT? Actually, uh, the political parties, usually, they have their own TV channels and their media. And they are sometimes they are spending a huge money to funding those media, so their thinking is to stop NRT and other free media, and also to like uh, to make a lot of to have a lot of medias, and also sometime they are trying to take the people from the NRT because uh, this independent institution, we don't have like a good 
funding. Sometimes they want to take the people there and just they do anything to, as I say, to stop the NRT. Mm -hmm. who, who are your customers? Who, who, who watches NRT? Uh, yeah. who, who do you market towards? Yeah. I think the people that they, they have hope, the people that they care about the politics, the people that they think one day their country changes, the people of Kurdistan. Unfortunately, most of people, they are taking care about the politics, about the news channel, and they are seeing NRT. And most of people that they want to know what really happened and outside of the political parties media, they watch NRT. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the Kurdish people. What, what is their mood today? Yeah. Uh, I think it's disappointed. They are disappointed in, at that moment because of the political situation, because as I said, the, the institution of Kurdistan, also because of the economic situation. Now in Kurdistan, the people, they are in the very, very bad economic situation. And also, as I said, they are feeling disappointed from those political parties. They are leading Kurdistan, running Kurdistan like for 60, 70 years. And also, they are disappointed from those figures that also they are leading Kurdistan like for 40, 50 years. So, for example, in the last two years, there's thousands of uh, thousands of people that they left Kurdistan. Just in USA, 700 people who they got visa went to Canada, and then they they don't come back here, and then going back to Iraq. And even those students that they came here for scholarship, Kurdish student, they don't want to go back to Kurdistan. This is all signs about the, that the people they are disappointed. But I think I believe in my people and I believe in the Kurdistan peoples, I think it's not gonna be continuous, and someday we will see that things will change. What needs to change? I think two things. First, the people of Kurdistan, they time, they have to try to change their situation. They have to fight for it. Media also, all the Kurdistan, of the people of Kurdistan together. This is very, very important from inside. And th the other things is from outside. For example, until now, the US government, they are supporting some political party in Kurdistan. Some even the like uh, military groups, they are funded by the US government. So the US government, they have influence on Kurdistan. I remember in 2003 when the US army came to Kurdistan. They welcomed the US Army with flowers. We were the only nation that welcomed the US Army and still I think a lot of people, they think they are friends of this state and this country. So I think the US government, they have influence of the politicians in Kurdistan and on the political parties in Kurdistan. They have also to push them to, to make them choose having the right choice. Now I think the Kurdistan in front of the crossroad of the two path. One path in going one path going to uh, into the dictatorship system, not respecting the human rights and also not respecting the freedom of speech, violence, and the other path is going be to be a democratic system, respecting all those values that I mentioned, stability and peacefully handovering of the power. So the US government, I think, they can have a role. They can have an influence on the people in Kurdistan, on the politicians in Kurdistan, to select the second one. Because I think if they choose the first one, they may have some political leader in Kurdistan to be their friends, but they will lose the people there, they will lose the business opportunity, they always also lose losing the stability in Kurdistan. But if they trying to push the Kurdish government, the political party, to select the second path, I think they will have all together, leaders, political parties, people, and also the stability, and also business opportunity, and development in the region. You've been here in Washington for a few days, meeting with members of Congress. What have you been telling them? I told them the same story. 
I talked about the media, I talked about the politi political situation. And the good thing that they were, they were so happy, they, some of them say that, wow, it's the first time that we met someone not asking for money and not asking for weapon. <laughs> it's a good story that you are telling us. And they say that we, we love to support the Kurdistan region, we love to support democracy in Kurdistan, we love to support the media in Kurdistan. I, I think I got a good message from them. Mm -hmm. So you said that you think Kurdistan can go down the path towards democracy. Well, what, do you, what do you think the US government will do, and what do you want them to do? The, I think the same thing that I, I mentioned. I want them to focus on democracy. I want them to focus on directing the Kurdistan parties to select the, the second one. We need the good governance in Kurdistan. That's what we need from the US government. The people of uh, Kurdistan, some people of Kurdistan, or maybe most of people of Kurdistan, thinking that the, the, the US government and even the people of the United States, they can help the people there. The United States government can has influence on the people, on the politician, on Kurdistan. So what we want from the US government is just a simple thing support democratic system in Kurdistan. How should they do that? As I told you, first, we have to do our jobs. We have to do our parts in Kurdistan. Second, still they have soldiers there. They have power there. They create the new era. The US government changes the Saddam regime because they wanted to bring a new one, a, a system that will be at least democracy. But unfortunately now, day after day, day after day, we are seeing that the, the Kurdistan system going into the wrong direction. So what we want, just we want them to support democratic system and bring those political back into the right way. Mm -hmm. What do you see as Kurdistan's future? Which path are they going to choose? Of course I choose the second path, I remember, maybe you are remembering on 1960s when uh, in the United States uh, you, are, you are talking about some values. Maybe someone didn't believe that, for example, you reached these days. For example, I remember Martin Luther King when he had a dream on 1960s I think he never thought that his dream would be true in one day, or maybe he knew, I don't know, but he had a dream. And I think I have a dream also, maybe in the, the same dream of Martin Luther King, but in a different way. I have a dream that I, one day I see my country independent country, people living better than now. Our child, children living better than now. They have school education better than now. I want, I have a dream that one day I will see my country develop it, prosper country. I have a dream that one day I see all the Kurdish nation all together fighting for their future, looking for the common points, not of the point of in differences. This is my dream that one day I hope that I see all of us together fighting for our future and making Kurdistan better than now. There are international hurdles to that dream too, not just within Kurdistan. Uh, talk about that, how, how much does, does that hinder what Kurdistan can be? First, second, third option is our options. Mm -hmm. The Kurdish people should fight for their lives, should fight for their future, and then the international matters and the regional matters came after that. If we be stronger inside, if we be united inside, if you just fighting for our future, so I think the other things will definitely happen. Mm -hmm. They have to deal with us, no doubt. But first, we have to fight in all together. We, as I told you, we have to looking for the common points, not the points of difference. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think one of the things that Americans know most about 
uh, Kurdistan is the current it, in the context of the current battle against ISIS. Uh, how have you? How has NRT covered that fight? Yeah, NRT covered that fight uh, as all other medias in Kurdistan because you know we don't have access to go to the other parts, but from the parts we covered the ISIS's war actually ISIS's issue in Kurdistan. I think for after ISIS there is challenges, as you know, and I think in the next a few more if it's not be a few weeks, I think the ISIS issues will be done in Iraq, at least in Iraq. It will be controlled. So the challenges is after ISIS. After ISIS for all Iraq people and for Kurdistan's people. I think for Kurdistan's people, it is the exactly the way that the people was, which have to select one of the paths that, that I told you. Because until now, we had excuse that maybe we have some mistakes, something wrong. But after ISIS, we don't have excuse. Mm -hmm. We have to select which path we will, we have to decide which path we will select. We have to know which kind of government we will select. This is very important. For all Iraq, I think we talked about military solution, which it works. And also somebody talking about the political situation, which I believe this is very, very important. But I think the third and fourth is very important, which is education and economy. We have to work on the education. We, we have to know what is our children, uh, they will, how, what they teach them in the school, our children, our youth, what they teach them in the university. We have to, to know to make them have a better education. This is very, very important because I still believe that there is some materials, something in the schools could, could may help some people to have like a, maybe, maybe I don't know, radical thought. So education is very, very important. Make our people much educated. Mm -hmm. This is a very important point. And the other is economic. The people now, they are living in the very bad situation economic. If we make them feeling better, if you make the economic better, if they will be independent economically, then they don't have, they don't thinking about the radical groups. If they have a good life, if they go into outside, coming back, have a vacation, so they don't need any more to, they don't think anymore about the radical groups. So beside the military solution, political, political solution, it's important thinking about education and economic mm -hmm. after ISIS. Mm -hmm. um, we in America, it, it would seem to me, pay it, most of our attention to Iraq based on uh, what's happening with ISIS right now. What's, what's it like in Kurdistan? Is, is ISIS the biggest story or what? What's, what's the biggest story that NRT covers every day? I think for some places, of course, ISIS is a big story, especially for those places that the people, they left their houses. But if you say about, if you talk about all Iraq, and especially if you take, talk about Kurdistan, no, I think the ISIS is not a, one of the topics. I think the people taking care about the welfare, this is very important, mm -hmm. their life, is very important. This is the one of the topic that the people talking about is now in Iraq. The people in Iraq and in Kurdistan, they are afraid to go back to, to previous years, mm -hmm. to lose this kind of system that they had a dream about it. So this is the big challenge in front of the people, economic and the shape of the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is the biggest story that we that is happening in Kurdistan that we in the U.S. don't follow? This thing that I just told you, the shape of the governance, the shape of the system. It is very, very important for the Kurdish people, and they think that the United States government can have influence of the political parties, and I think maybe, maybe the people here in the United States, they don't know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think the fight against ISIS has been covered accurately by the media? 
Yeah, I think at least for the beginning, it was, yeah, it was good, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, so what comes next, as, as uh, especially as all these weapons have flown into, uh, in, into the region, what do you see as the post-ISIS military situation? That's a good question. This is one of the big questions. I think the United States government and other countries, they help with the Kurdish government and even the other groups in Iraq. Me as a Kurdish citizen, uh, I'm thanking those governments that they help us. But the big question is now, who, what they do with this weapon? Who they use it? against who they will use it. This is, I think, the biggest challenge in front of us. And that's why we need people here in DC, in United States, to focus more on Kurdistan and Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, in just a minute, I'm gonna ask for any questions from the audience, but I wanna ask a few uh, final questions. One of them, uh, the US has worked hard to uh, merge various Peshmerga groups. Uh, is that working? Uh, sorry, the question. The, the, is, is the U.S. effort to unify various ah, Peshmerga yeah, groups, is, yeah. that, is that working? Yeah. I think, first let me say something. We have a very, very brave Peshmerga. Not I'm just saying that because I'm Kurdish. Because I know that they are fighting for a cause. They don't even fight for the political parties. They don't have a good salary. The other groups in Iraq, they have sometimes the salary twice or triple than them, mm -hmm. but still they are fighting. So it is just by one thing we can thanks them if we make their lives better. The making Peshmerga United Army is one thing that we all hope. It is one of our dreams. And I say that I had a dream, I have a dream. But unfortunately now, I don't think those political party can do it. For example, just imagine, since 2004 and 2005, which is almost 13 years, we have our united government. But as I, as I told you, still we don't have united government. Still, for example, the president of Kurdistan, he's a president <coughs> legally. He cannot, for example, employ one policeman in Suleimania, which is the other sea is not under his control is still not united government as a government, mm -hmm. that all institution is united. Still running by separate parties. So just imagine, it's just a government. If in 13 years we couldn't make, it, make them united, how we can make the Peshmerga united? Mm -hmm. Especially someone in Kurdistan want to have a Peshmerga not united. They always want Peshmerga to have loyalty for themselves, mm -hmm. not for the country, more not for the land. <coughs> That's what they thinking about it, I think. Mm -hmm. One of the things that jumped out at me when I read about NRT in, in preparing for this was your show, uh, First Step. Tell me about First Step. Yeah, in the moment that I talked about the disappointed and disappointing and a lot of problems in Kurdistan, I think this show I thought this show will help some people, at least the youth. I don't want the people in Kurdistan just thinking about the salary to be employed by the government. I want the people, the youth, thinking about the business opportunity. I want them to think that one day they could be independent economically. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot of potential in Kurdistan. Very, very intelligent youth in Kurdistan. But unfortunately, they didn't use them. Always, unfortunately, the system, the political parties, when they see a youth or the success people, they put boundaries around them. <coughs> they make them down. They don't want people to be clever, to be independent economically, to be rise. So the program, the purpose of my program was showing other direction to those youth that are thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right, let's open it up to questions. Yes, ma'am. Yes, oh, sorry. Let's wait for the microphone coming around right now. Here it is. Here we go. There we go. Uh, thank you. Uh, Marina Ottawa with the Wilson Center. 
you have talked about the div how divided the country is, and I think anybody who is moderately informed about Kurdistan knows what you are talking about, the two major parties and so on. Now, I have two questions on that. One is that there have been a lot of negotiations going on for months now between the major parties about reopening the parliament. Do you see those negotiations going anywhere? And the second question is, you are operating out of Suleymaniyah, which is the part of the country which is controlled by the PUK and Goran. Can you operate in Suleymaniyah independently of those two political parties? You talk about freedom of the press, but you are, walking, uh, you are working in an environment that's not free. Thank you, thank you very much. For the first question, I think we had a problem even before Parliament had been paralyzed. I think this kind of problem, they just made the problem to make the people forget the main problems. I think that now in Kurdistan, even if they open the Parliament, which I believe they can do it, still we have the same mentality the same mentality of running the country, of managing the country, the same mentality that someone wants to capture the state, to control everything, to ignore the people, to ignore the free media, to, to don't let the people have their independent business, their developed economy. I think this is a problem. The problem of government, it is easy, I can express to you easily, the people want to lead Kurdistan for the next 100, 200 years. That's a problem. Nothing else is a problem. It's just we, we have someone who they believe in their country, who they want to build like a inspiring institution or system in Kurdistan, then we don't have such a problem. For what you mentioned in about the Goran and PUK in Suleimania, yeah, and if we can be independent or not, of course, if we cannot be independent, why they burn the TV down? Why I had assassination attempt? Because we are not listening. I don't take care about them. I know someday I will die. And it's not just saying that. I'm sure 100% that maybe I'm not living forever or something happened to me. But I'm believing in my cause. I believe that the media, only the independent media, will help the Kurdistan. Political parties, even those parties that you mentioned them, they don't like free media. Everybody hates free media. It's like a virus living in the very unusual environmental. They don't want clean environmental. They want everything either be with you or against you. They, they easily, they don't like free media. Why? Because if you have free media, if really we have a real free media, then the people, they will trust that media. So that's they don't like it. So I think the challenge is not for NRT, it's not one pe political party. We had problem with most of the political party. Even not with the political parties, sometimes with groups, with some groups that if you mention something about them, they don't accept it. We have to make them understand that the media is not against them. The media is one important column that the Kurdish structure, Kurdish government structure based on it. That's what we want to tell them. Anybody else? Right here in the front, sir. There's a microphone coming. Hi. Um, is your model, are, are you broadcast or cable or satellite or on the internet? Or satellite. All of the above or what? And, and second, related to that, are you reaching Kurdish communities in Turkey and Iran or just in Iraq? Yeah. Thank you for your question. First, we are broadcasting as a main satellite but also we have websites. We have like a six websites. Can everybody reach them? And until now, so far, it's not banned from any country, including Iran and Turkey, because I think they know that NRT is not, has like a political agenda. They are not against anyone specifically. So, so far they didn't ban it, the NRT websites. And the people here, especially through Facebook, through live streams, all Kurdish community around the world, they can follow NRT. Okay. We've got a question in the back over here. There we go. 
Hello, uh, I'm Clint Arthur with Friends of Rojava in North America. And uh, last year I actually watched NRT's coverage of the protests against the KRG government, uh, the failure to pay wages to civil servants and teachers, the protests and strikes that related to that. And in those protests, uh, I believe the Barzani KRG government uh, repressed uh, NRT for some time, as well as using that as an excuse to shut down parliament and ban the speaker uh, from parliament from ever returning to our bill. Uh, knowing that uh, Barzani has uh, an implicit strategic alliance with Erdogan of Turkey, and Turkey is no friend of the free press, it's the number one jailer of journalists in the world, uh, would you speculate on why Turkey, the, why the AKP, why Erdogan has not yet, say, seized all the property that you own in Turkey? Uh, I think NRT had a lot of issues before even. We had, it's like a something usual for us. They always doing those things against NRT. It's like a semi-normal daily. We had the people capturing or arrested or like a pushing them. But as I told you, we, we, we think we believe that it is uh, one uh, thing that we believe in it. And uh, uh, sorry, I forget the question. Uh, about the, why the, we can work in Turkey, because as I told you, what is media doing in the world should be not against anyone. The media just simply cover the things, cover events. We are not against Turkey. We are not against Iran. We are not against KDP. We are not against PUK. We are not against Goran or any other political parties. We just a media, media broadcasting, covering events. I think the people from Turkey and even Iran, when they see, when they look at NRT content, they have some feeling. So that is the point of difference between NRT and the other channels. I think if they know, if they know that we are not uh, funded or supported by a political agenda, so I think it's fine. I think that's why. All right, we had one more right here in the middle here. Actually, two more in the middle there. Uh, Dave Ottaway, also from the Woodrow Wilson Center, like my wife. Um, the way you describe the situation uh, now in the KRG really made me wonder whether having a referendum on independence, as has been proposed by Barzani, that this is the right time. Uh, and uh, has NRT taken a position on how holding a referendum? And do you think this is the time? Well, he's talking about before the end of the year to hold a referendum on independence. OK, thank you very much. I can answer you as a, maybe as an NRT or as myself. As an NRT, I just mentioned that the media should not have any position. Just the media should cover the statements, the ideas about the all political parties, which NRT doing right now. It's not has he don't have it don't have any position against or with referendum. But me as a person, as a Kurdish citizen, as I say, it, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day I will see my independent country. I don't think no one in Kurdistan just don't like to be independent. I, I don't think, I don't think so. It is our dream since 100 years but the question is, which kind of country we want? Is it something like South Sudan? Or for example, something I don't know, like United States or like any other country? Or at least like Montenegro, which I don't think is good, but I think better than South Sudan. So before we have an independent country, what we need is we have to make Kurdistan one piece again. United Nation, United Army, one piece again. This is the most important point. All political party with the peoples, they have to unite it again, to be one piece again. Second, we have to build institutions. No country is 
on the world can run without institution. It will be something different. It brings the violence. It brings the disagrees. It brings the lot of problems and some new problems that could we don't have it now. And after that, we need like a very, very strong economy. Now, all Kurdistan's economy is, and is going by one pipe through Turkey. You don't have to be very intelligent and very clever to know, to think about it. So what happened if the Turkey just say stop the sending oils? What happened to, to the Kurdish people? So are they die? Are they suffering much than now? So the important thing before being independent, make Kurdistan united again, all together, we have to all working together and build institutions and then very, very strong economy. Then the other, we don't need a referendum, we don't need anything, we can just say simply it is our country. We have to be independent. In that case, nobody can push us. But now, they can push us, they can push on our economy, they can make some group, groups against the other because we are not, uh, we, we are not united. Also, they can do a lot of like a problem inside the Kurdistan because we don't have institution. So I think by doing this three important point, being independent is very easy. I don't say, let me, not very, very easy, but it is, I think it is something that we can do it. All right, we have another question right here. Oh, yeah. Thank you, my name is Megan Baudet and I'm with Kurdistan Aid. And I was wondering, in light of statements by many members of the current US administration, both about prioritizing geopolitical interests over human rights and about the press here and abroad, are you worried that US support for freedom of the press and democratic institutions in Kurdistan will be subordinated to other interests? Or do you think that under this administration they will continue to support the democratic path? Yeah. I think the United States government feels they're thinking about the stability in Kurdistan and Iraq. And one condition of be stable bring stability is living together, tolerance, transparency, and democracy system. If we don't have those things, so we don't have stability. We will have, unfortunately, violence. We will don't have the peacefully because no one, especially in Kurdistan, I know the mentality of myself, and I know how the Kurdish people think, there's no way someone can lead Kurdistan for the next 100 years. It's unbelievable. I know, I know what you mean. For example, we have Saudi Arabia. It's like a country since 80 years ago, 70 years ago, and still the United States, they are dealing with them. They, maybe they don't care about the, those things that we mentioned, but I think Saudi Arabia is a system that founded like a 70 years, 80 years ago. But Kurdistan, we still, we don't have a government country. We don't have an independent country. So I think the good things for, of the United States government is try to have a good governance, democracy system, and also ally with the United States. This is the perfect solution. Why we think about something else? We've got time for a couple more, and it looks like we've got three more. Let's take those okay. three. And okay, we'll start maybe in the back and work our way to the front Great. over Sounds here. Good. One back there, one right here, one right here. Thank you, Shaswar, for this opportunity. Uh, as you mentioned, that the generation in, in, in the Iraqi Kurdistan region, and I can say that uh, most of the generations right now, they are very disappointed because they live in a very unhealthy environment. Uh, in, in, in that part of, of our uh, land, of our country. But my question is uh, how the civil organizations, how the civil movements can convert this disappointment to, to another hope for the generation and establish the stability and establish a new system uh, for 
for the political situation over there. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we have only one way. That way that you mentioned. We try violence for a lot of time, for like a hundred years. And at the end, we came back onto the table and did a negotiation with each other. So the only solution is civil process. It's trying by those ways that you mentioned it to make Kurdistan better. I think at the end, there is no any other solution. And the changes, the real changes in Kurdistan should happen. Um, living with my people in Kurdistan, I see them, I see their eyes. I'm sure that it, this situation, the existing situation, is not going to be continuous. Something should be happening. Maybe next month, I don't know, maybe next year. But something should be happening because the people, they don't deserve that situation that is existing now. All right. Second row, all the way on the left there. Yeah, sorry. With you. Okay. I'll, okay. Niels Barzoni from KRG office in DC. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Clark okay. Sashwar. Thank you. Uh, you painted a very ugly picture of KRG. I have, I just have two questions. Uh, you said if KRG is so controlling, if KRG is so oppressive, how can an independent person like you become so successful and powerful in Kurdistan? Good question. And uh, you said KRG is not a government. KRG is from the clan. KRG is a group of elites and all that. You own some of the biggest projects maybe in Iraq, not only in Kurdistan. How did you manage to get all those licenses for your project if, if it's a corrupt government? Thank you very much. First, let me be honest with you. I believe in, in my country. And I say I respect in my country, my people, even my government. I'm not against them. I don't think we are enemy of them. I think we are doing these things even here in DC and what we did in Kurdistan because we love our country. So how the people like me can exist in Kurdistan because as you know, it is, I can say luckily I'm alive. You know better than me. You know what I suffered. You know that I had been shot. You know that what they did every day to us, not me in person. For your information and about the second question about the business, how I have a business. I had all business before 2011. Of course, there was opportunity. I'm still believing that there is an opportunity in Kurdistan. I'm not saying that the Kurdistan is free, the worst place in the world. I believe in it. I think we can change it. That's why we are trying. That's why I'm still in Kurdistan. That's why I didn't left Kurdistan. Because I think the only thing, me, you, KRG, political party, all the only solution is living together, making Kurdistan better together. I had businesses before 2011, and maybe they don't thought that, they don't think how I'm working and if I establish a TV channel or not. But since 2011 until today, even I go to any competition for a business, if, we, I, if I get a number one and I have a lowest price, they don't give me the businesses. They give us to someone else. But still, I, I'm believing in my country, in my people. I think the only solution is all together making Kurdistan better. All right. Time and for the last one question, last right question over, here. over here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shashwar. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, your message was loud and clear about what US government should do to promote democracy in Kurdistan overall. What's your message for a uh, US citizens, people in this country, um, even in this room, um, US citizens, they are, are the taxpayers of this country, and out from their taxpayers, we spend three, three trillion dollars in Iraq to promote democracy. What's, what will be the role of the simple citizen in the US to support your idea? That's number one, one side of the, one side of the question. Number two, what's your message for the Kurdish community in the US to support uh, the promoting democracy in the KRG or any other part of the Kurdistan? Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I think the first question is the answer of the first question. The, as I mentioned, the people in Kurdistan, they are the, one of the only nations in that area, in that region, that they love this country. This is very important. I think in back, the people here in the United States, they, they have to engage with their governments and then asking their governments to have, to have influence on the political parties in Kurdistan, on the governments in Kurdistan, to, as I told you, to select the second path, which is democratic system. For the Kurdish community, I ask them to also to have influence on the people in Kurdistan by rising knowledge, by rising education, by talking to the people, by choosing the civil process, civil way to make our country much developer and much prosper uh, country. So the only thing in front of us is the peaceful living together, fighting for better Kurdistan. We tried several ways, we tried different ways, and at the end, no one of them brought the good result for us. The only thing is by acknowledging the Kurdish individual, make them understand what we have to do in the future. Thank you very much. All right, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Reed Wilson and Shazwar, so much. Um, please like NRT TV uh, English on Facebook and um, uh, Six Point Strategies you can find on Facebook for future events as well. And uh, I would just like to give one more round of applause for our speakers. Thank you so much for, for coming and for your speaking.